Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant, that was my finger. Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party, how's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. I just filmed a plant video, which I haven't done in a very long time, and it felt nice to just talk about a plant. The video probably ended up being way too long and uh, unnecessary, considering it's just repotting a bird's nest fern, but I was feeling myself, so it just is what it is, and that's okay. Also, it's a beautiful day. It's like 94, which normally would feel miserable, but for some reason it doesn't. So I've been concerned about not being able to be outside if it's hot because of the sweat, so I'm not supposed to sweat because there's a giant keeping hole in my shoulder, but um, it's been okay. I've been staying near the fan and that helps a lot, but it's just, I don't know, it's nice to be outside. And I had a really good time just doing something with my plants. It felt good. I've been doing some other things. I've been repotting a lot of little things. That's pretty much all I can do. I have a whole bunch of little heliconias that are back here that I still need to repot. Haven't gotten to it yet, but I did, well, I did with a couple of them. The two in the front, those are heliconia restratas. Couldn't tell if I was out of focus or if my lens was greasy. Also, vlogging with the phone because the camera, it's a little bit heavy. It's not that great on my shoulder. It doesn't weigh a lot, but it's just, I don't know, it's awkward. This is better, so if things are shaky or audio gets weird in this video, that's why. But I don't think it's going to be a problem, just putting that out there. I also repotted a bunch of my, what are these, Hedichiums. These are butterfly gingers. These were in a video, I don't know probably a month or so ago and I got these because I wanted to set up a little area in my garden to trial them for cold hardiness and these are all pink. They're all pink flowers. The ones that I have been growing have orange flowers. I wanted to find a pink variety that's also cold tolerant. So there are, I believe there's five different Hedichiums in here. I need to redo their labels because the labels they came with, you can see are, they're fading an awful lot. So I want to make sure that I can remember what they are. But I went ahead and just bumped them up into a larger pot size. They were just in tiny pots when they showed up from Aloha Tropicals. And uh, I think that they are too small to trial this year. I'd rather get them in the ground when they actually have a nice fully developed rhizome. So I'll be keeping them potted this year and they'll grow in the ground next year. Or I'll get them in the ground this year but have to lift them for the fall and won't leave them out for the winter time. Until next year. Ambly, which is, that's a good thing. That means things are getting back to normal over here. I'm okay with that. And in other exciting news, I'm supposed to be getting a new umbrella today. That might not seem like a very big deal, but I spent a very long time, and I mean a very long time, online from February till June 23rd, trying to find an umbrella that I thought was a reasonable price that would fit these tables. And you know what? Umbrellas? Ridiculously expensive. I wasn't going to spend two or three hundred bucks on a ten-foot umbrella. This is nine, but I decided to upgrade to ten, so there'd be a little bit more space to keep myself in the shade since I need the shade. This umbrella is broken. It has a tear in it. And then the umbrella that goes on that table over there, that one got shredded during a storm. So I am very excited. Didn't mean to zoom in there. Just zoomed in some more. Things are a little bit rusty here. Sorry. I'm really excited about the new umbrella coming. It's my cancer umbrella. That's <laughs> after the doctor called, that was what I did. I bawled my eyes out for a while and then I got on Amazon and I ordered an umbrella. I said, screw it. It doesn't have to be fancy. I just magically one showed up that was 120 bucks that had all the features I wanted. It's 10 feet, has solar lights on it, and it has a crank tilt. I'll explain what that means when it comes in, but I haven't been able to find those features on anything that was 10 foot, uh, 400, 200 bucks. So it was like, hey, this is, that's nice, right? Something worked out well that day. And now I'm just waiting for it to show up. UPS says it's on the way. So there will be a new umbrella here soon, and then I can put this umbrella over there and my helper is going to help get that whole situation fixed. It's a disaster. That was my potting area before everything happened and then everything happened and I can't, can't really bend over very well to pick things up. So that'll hopefully get done in this video. Some tidying and some cleaning and once that other table's available with an umbrella above it I can move the rest of the plants out of the garage. They're not looking very good. They're because they're still in the garage. They, they don't want to be there. And um, I was very trusting of the people who are helping me with my plants. And they're doing their absolute best. But I think they've missed a few things that are in the garage. And that's all right. I'm not going to be hung up on losing plants here and there. That's Especially with everything that's going on. But I can move them out onto that table in the shade now. The problem with lots of little plants, like little guys, this wasn't a smaller pot. 
is I can't just like lay them in the shade because Tucker, my dog, comes out and he dognados all over the little plants. So they have to go onto tables under an umbrella. So hopefully when that umbrella gets here, I'll be able to do that. Maybe not today because it is, I mean, pretty toasty. As long as I stay still and in the shade, it's not too bad. But anyways, there's my five minute intro of just pure and total chaos. Things might be kind of rambly and weird, which is, I guess, normal for how I vlog. It's just been a while since I've vlogged and, like, actually vlogged a little bit every day. And it feels kind of awesome. It feels good to have some normalcy. And um, then I have the nervous energy because I'm still waiting to hear back about my biopsies from my surgery that I had before. But trying to not think about that, the CT scan was clear. So, like, a lot of worst case scenarios I don't have to worry about as much. So it's mostly just nervous energy. I just explained it to you. Y'all know what's going on. Things are weird around here and I'm trying to make the most of it and doing my best to hang out with my plants, enjoy them, can do some little repots and maybe some rearranging. I don't know. We'll find out together. I need to go change this. Apparently I was supposed to do that after two days. It's been four. I, they didn't tell me that. I talked to them on the phone today. The post surgery place like calls just to check in on you and I was like what am I supposed to do with this I was all messed up on stuff when they told me what to do and she was like well it should have been written down I was like it wasn't nobody wrote it down there's like a binder it wasn't in there she said oh well after two days you're supposed to change it and wash it we're like oh I thought that they had just said if it gets dirty to change it and wash either way it's fine it's only been three days so I didn't need to explain any of that but again just look up, look, this, there's not going to be a point here. Back to the normalcy of things just being random and chaotic. You're welcome. Pumpkin. Pumpkin, the umbrella's here. Are you as excited as I am, Pumpkin? Oh, we need to get your eye boogies. You got some big old eye boogies, Pumpkin. Okay, all right. You don't want eye boogies cleaned? Come on, Blight. Yeah, hi, sweetie. Okay, Pumpkin, it's umbrella time. You coming with me? Yeah, let's go get, let's, let's go see that umbrella. Go check out that umbrella pumpkin. You got plans? Sometimes she likes to take me on walks around the house where I'm just supposed to just follow her. Sometimes it goes on for a very long time. Where are we going, pumpkin? Where are we walking today? Where are we going? Oh, I was just getting ready to go out and you'd start rolling over and being all cute. You're such a sweet pumpkin. Yes, you are, pumpkin. I'm not supposed to be bent over like this. It does not feel good. I'm sorry, pumpkin. Is it still raining? I know, a lot of abrupt changes happening. It's because we had some random heat showers. It's good timing for a new umbrella. Not that this one didn't work, it works, just, you know, it's got that hole in it. So, uh, I can't set this up, but I'm gonna, somebody else will set it up, and then... I'm hyping this up way too much. It's just an umbrella. Oh, I love it! It's not an exact match. Just ignore the mess. It's gonna get cleaned up. Everything's fine. Not an exact match at all, but I also, I really don't care. This one's a little bit taller. I did now, like just now, order a taller pipe to put this one into so it'll be raised up just a little bit because it like just, it's just a little bit above my head here. It's more of a baby blue than an aqua blue, but again, I don't really care. It was a good price and uh, it does the crank tilt thing, which I'm not sure if I can show that to you or not. I don't think I can. You turn this thing and then the umbrella tilts. So instead of having a button you push to do it, it does it the other way. And then it has the three vents in it. The three vents, the only reason that matters is because it's supposed to make it so that it's more wind resistant, like it won't blow over. I mean, looking at the thing, it seems pretty cheap. So I will be scotch guarding this very, very, very heavily with that scotch guard outdoor fabric stuff because it's really 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 thin but it's okay it'll do like I'm just happy to have the two umbrellas out here again again don't look, stop judging my mess oh my gosh don't be so judgy it's fine it's it's I was gonna say close enough it's really not close at all but there's two umbrellas that's that's all I care about and I don't know why I'm hiding the mess you can see it and then it is solar powered but the problem is that it's shady over here by like two or three o'clock in the afternoon and then I guess the lights just come on automatically so those might be like burnt out by the time evening rolls around the directions weren't very useful in any oh wait what wait what does that say it says switch all right so apparently i can turn them on and off there's a switch somewhere up here i bet it's easy there's a red thing you see the red thing 
right there. There we go. So I can just turn these off. That's better. Okay. I was wondering about that because I was like, well, if these go on automatically, as soon as there's no sun on them, then there's not going to be any light by the time it gets dark out. But also, the sun's not on them to charge them anymore, so it may not be bright tonight, but that's okay. Especially because this light got fixed. So that goes on at like 7.30 at night, so the area's bright again at nighttime. Finally, there was a bad GFCI. There was a bad GFCI here and down there, so they both got changed. And now there's light out here at nighttime. That's been something that's been bugging me for months. Months. If you've been around for the vlogs, you know. I've been talking about it. But now there's light at nighttime, which is good since morning and night's pretty much the only time that I can be out here. I went ahead and wrapped a wet rag around that bandage so it'll be easier to get off. It's like that's gonna rip all the hair out of my arm, so I'm gonna let that soak for a while. I added party lights to the umbrella, so that happened. They don't wrap all the way around though. I'm gonna have to crank the umbrella down. What I did here is I just let's crank it the right way no which way how do we how do we put down umbrellas there we go give that a few little turns pardon the you know like I said it wasn't very expensive I'll probably just have to gorilla glue that on there but I think it's pretty self-explanatory what direction to have to turn these things right I was getting to say pardon the mess on the table I've uh, been setting timers and those things. By pardon the mess, I mean I acknowledge there's a mess. I don't actually apologize for it. So I think that I just have to have the slack here and pull them up further. Yes? Also, this thing smells like a really cheap camping tent. Probably because that's essentially what this is. So if there's enough slack on here, then I can just kind of pull this off. It needs more slack. You get it. I don't need to film it. You understand. Y'all are smart and um... Oh, this needs some wrinkle release on it. Wow. Oh, that is thin. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just happy to have a new umbrella over here that doesn't have holes in it. There's just something nice about having two umbrellas. And look at it at night. A little bit wonky because I got the umbrella t tilted. I haven't tilted it back up, but I managed to take something that looks nice and look at super extra nice. For some reason, I was thinking that these changed colors, but they don't. It really doesn't matter because they're kind of unnecessary anyways. And I was going to show the lights, but I don't remember. It's too dark to find the switch and I can't reach up there. I'm not supposed to. Oh, there's the switch. The lights work. You just have to take my word for it. Okay, now on to tomorrow. Good morning, pumpkin. Get that pumpkin food. Yeah, good girl pumpkin. She has been a little bit timid lately because my sister's here with Buddy. It always takes like two days to adjust, but she's snapped out of it and she's getting sociable again and eating her food like a good girl. Yes, I know. This is, it's a lot of hand sanitizer. But believe me, if you saw the size of the hole in my back, you would have hand sanitizer around everywhere and everybody would be using it constantly. It's covered. But it's still something definitely, definitely, definitely do not want to have get infected. So, but my, you can't see it, but there's like a little square bouncing around that's supposed to focus on faces. So for some reason, my camera thinks there's a face right over here on the wall. That's creepy. What the heck's that about? There he is. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. I'm focus. How you doing? You sleepy? Yeah, you good boy. I fixed my fish tank. <laughs> Yeah, I know none of y'all knew it was broken. So the actual day I got the phone call about the cancer, this also broke. There's a hose down here in the refugium, which you don't typically use for freshwater tanks, but once upon a time, this was a discus tank and the refugium system worked well. I should explain a refugium system. So a refugium system is a filter that you grow plants in. Right now I have apothos in it, but there used to be aquatic plants in this middle chamber here. And the principle behind that was that at night, when the lights in the tank would turn off, a different light down here turned on, and there were plants down here, so you have 24 hours of photosynthetic activity, and therefore it keeps the water cleaner and reduces how often you have to do the water changes, which is great for fish like discus, because if you don't know what discus are, they're, just, they're a type of cichlid that require very pristine water conditions. That was years ago. I ended up not liking it. But either way, this chamber had plants in it, which meant there was like a two-inch layer of aquatic plant mud. 
And this hose right here, this one right there, got old and cracked and started spitting water into the refugium chamber, stirring it up, and then that was getting pumped up into the aquarium, hence why the water now looks like mud. I mean, it looks like natural lake water, really. But so it took like two weeks and eventually I was able to dig up the different plumbing parts to just run a separate line up to the tank to get it going again. But I still haven't been able to go through and like replumb. I have to completely redo both of these, which is something I can't do right now. Also, holy crap, that wall's dirty. I haven't looked back here in like two years. Not at the wall, at least, just at the filter, so... So there's a fun update that has nothing to do with anything. Is this the typical vlog stuff, right? Anyway, so that will settle. I'm actually probably going to do, like, at least a 50% water change to help get some of that out, but... At least it's running again. I had to take the fish that were in here and put them in the pond outside. Oh, and when this filter broke, simultaneously my backup filter back here broke. Perfect storm, right? Oh, good morning, Toby! Good morning, you coming? Yeah, come on, Tobes. That's a good boy, Toby. Good morning, Toby. <laughs> so much love from the dogs in the morning. What a good boy. I know this probably doesn't look like sufficient bandaging because it technically isn't, but it's been a week and it's, it's it's got that glue clear stuff over it. It's just like a, looks like a cat scratch. So I feel like if I'm going to actually do something dirty, I'll tape it up the rest of the way, but otherwise it's not a problem. Stay out of there, Toby. It's not for you. There you are. Yeah, so I had three Oscars in the house, and I had to move them out here just because, I mean, you'll saw the tank. And it's been like two weeks since all that stuff went down, so this just seemed like the best bet. And really, you get the best growth in color out of them anyways, outdoors. I usually try and tap a few times before I throw the food in, just because that way they start to make an association. You have to, like, at least look for your food. You can't just take it right from my hand, dude. There you go. Get it. Go on. Make an effort. I have to drop it right above your head. Anyways, go ahead and throw the rest of that food in there. So there's two other Oscars in here. I never see them. I think it's because this one, which is actually the smaller of the three, might be bullying the other two. This is the problem with a pond situation, is I can't really uh, judge whether or not that's happening. It's kind of hard to make observations, so... And the other two are just, like, darker colored in general, so it's harder to see them. But everything in here is still eating. I'm able to see them on occasion, so I know they're okay. And they seem happy out here, but I had to drain the water down so that they can't jump out because Oscars are jumpers. But that's been working out okay. And things that didn't make it into the garden tour, I have hydrangeas blooming over here and over there and down there i actually might go ahead and do some cutting on those and take them inside and put them in a vase just because it's pretty and then back here behind this trellis the hibiscus the hardy hibiscus will kind of die down to the ground and come back every year that's getting ready to bloom i have a whole bunch of natives and perennials that are going to get planted up here sometime soon whenever the people who help me out with things feel like doing it i'll go ahead and lay them out and they'll put those in the ground that's exciting. exciting. For me, anyways, here's the vegetable garden that I basically gave up on. I didn't really give up on it, but, you know, I stopped tending to it with everything that's been going on. But I've been wondering, I keep finding, like, peppers, just pieces of pepper plants laying around, and I thought something was eating them. But then I observed that one of the people who's been watering my plants has been watering them with the jet function on the hose. I don't know why. It just seems like common sense to me that you wouldn't do that. But hey, to each their own. The plants are getting watered, but it's also knocking all the fruit off of my plants. I went to pick some tomatoes the other day, and I was like, wait, where did all my ripe tomatoes go? And they were just everywhere <laughs> from, the, from the hose just blasting them off the plants. I don't care. It's no big deal. And the lotus has been blooming over these last few days, and that's something I definitely didn't want to forget and leave out of these videos. The lotus flowers are so much fun to have around because they start off smaller, and then they close in the evening time. Like, they, you know, it starts like a normal flower, a flower bud. And the first day it opens a little, and then it closes in, in the evening, and then the next day it opens a little bit more, and then closes in the evening. And right now it's on day four. I probably should have tried to show you guys what it looked like on day one and two because by day four it's starting to look a little bit more ratty but they're actually opening up all the way 
which I think looks pretty cool. They look so pretty. They have that fun classic lotus shape to them with that beautiful inside. Just overall beautiful plants. I enjoy the lotus very much. Remember, I wasn't even sure if these were going to bloom this year because I thought I had killed them. So I'm, clearly they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> looking for the sun the only full sun spot i actually have in my yard anymore is like right next to that pot which would be in the middle of the patio so uh, again my motto lately has just been it's fine everything's fine whatever it's surviving it's okay and it's saturday this video started on a monday and i was like yay yay umbrella i'm gonna do all the things this week and then um nope didn't do anything <laughs> i have a whole group of people in town here right now and around me trying to help keep me occupied and keep my mind busy which has been really nice for some reason the pathology from my last surgery is taking an eternity my doctors don't know why the pathology is taking so long i'm hopeful that by monday i have like a, a phone call check up with the oncology surgeon I would hope by then they'll have some results but I have no way of knowing because it was only supposed to take five days and Monday will be 11 days which is kind of ridiculous for biopsies but I don't know something weird's going on they're confused my doctors are confused and they're pretty pissed off about it too so uh, I don't I don't know I'm just trusting them to handle things and do what needs to be done uh, but if everything is good, then I'll be able to get a skin graft next week and then get that ball rolling onto some normalcy. If not, then just have to do whatever the next steps are. And uh, that's just, you know, is what it is. But I want to thank you, everybody, who's been checking in. My silence doesn't mean anything's wrong. It's just, I, I don't know. The, the silence that I've, about the cancer is just, I have no idea what's going on right now. So it's just kind of a waiting game unfortunately that's just part of the process uh so i have gotten i got a new fertilizer what do you call this mixer here i got this for my friends and family who are helping me out to use because it's a really easy to use one it's made by jacks i like their fertilizers jr peters this particular one you can particular <laughs> this particular one you can see has really easy to set dials on it so you just select on the top how you want to feed the plants it just seems like an easier way to go than the more typical ones where you have to measure out the ratios and everything i thought this would be easier for them to use you just put 12 tablespoons which i think is about three quarters of a cup of the fertilizer in that needs to be used and just set that dial so if anybody's interested and you get frustrated trying to figure out the ratios and whatnot on these fertilizer solution mixer hose end things the Jack's one might be an option for you. I will say, kind of ridiculously expensive. This was $35 for this. That's a pretty hefty price for a hose end sprayer. But, um, you know, I was just trying to find a way to keep things simple for the people who are helping me out here. And I think this is probably the best way to do that. And I like it. I like, I really like Jack's fertilizers, J.R. Peters. They, they have really nice stuff. Especially if you have harder water, like their fertilizers tend to not, like the pHs and stuff don't get thrown off too much. And so the viability, or not the viability, the uptake, I guess that's kind of the same thing. The nutrient uptake doesn't get thrown off by the water quality. So that's good stuff here. I have the petunia feed and the palm fruit over here. And I was comparing the backs of them and they're not that different. So when they were asking me how they should fertilize the palm tree pots around the pool because there's a lot of petunias and there's palm trees. It kind of came down to, I don't actually think it's going to matter which one they use, but I just figure every other week just alternate. It's probably the way I'll go. When I was doing my fertilizing, I was fertilizing once a week. And uh, sometimes with like the pool pots, I would fertilize in micro doses pretty much every time I'd water. I'm not gonna expect people who are helping me out to do that. That seems like a bit much. I'm not gonna do that. That's too much work. What are you doing? Did you go swimming? Did you go swimming? It's not even hot out yet. It's still early. You just jumped right in the pool for your morning activities. 
get that morning workout in. You know, you're such a good boy, Tucker. What a good boy. And this is why I should not keep plants on the ground. It never works out well for the plants. They get dognadoed every single time. He's such a good boy, Tucker. Some of y'all caught on to the fact that I released the fern video on a Friday. I'm not official, officially, I'm not officially going to declare a Fern Friday series yet because I don't really know what my life's going to be like over the next few weeks or even months. I need that pathology back before I can really make any decisions like that. But I actually had intended for this video to come out on a Wednesday and it was edited and ready to come out on Wednesday and then I just didn't have time to just fill out the few little things that have to be filled out and public it. Because uh, I've, I've been surrounded by peoples who have been very loving and helpful and keeping my mind distracted. We've all been helping to keep each other distracted. It's family, you know? It's Everybody's kind of on pins and needles waiting for a result. So I did release it on a Friday just because that's when I actually had time to release it. I would like to get the Fern Friday thing going again. But um, I don't want to commit to a, like, a day for anything to be like, hey, there's always me a video on this day until... I know what's going on. I'm sure you understand that completely. So, but that maybe, potentially, we will see. If all goes well, then maybe there will be another Fern video out next Friday. I don't know yet. So, that's what's going on here. How are you all doing? <laughs> Hope you're good. I know, weird video, but I feel like that's kind of, sort of, just the nature of the vlogs. It's been a minute. Hey, Robin, you're looking a little bit raggedy. Sorry, that wasn't nice. I don't blame you for flying away. That was rude. I shouldn't have said that. But, um, yeah, here we are. These are too big for these pots, by the way. Don't know what I was thinking there. I probably wasn't. My mind's been a little bit preoccupied over the last couple months. <laughs> like, this is, it doesn't make sense. These are getting huge. I didn't think they were going to get this big. And it's only July, and they're already, like, a good four feet tall, at least on this end. The ones over here aren't quite as big. I'll figure something out with that at another time. Or I might just leave them. I might just say forget it and leave them. At the very least, I would like to take a division of these and put them in a shallow round planter just surrounded by like lemon coral sedum and just have green on green. Maybe with some purple in there, but I think just green on green. Like, it might look kind of cool, right? See, because down here I have this planter that has like kind of like a, fa a faux patina to it. It has like that nice bluey color to it. It's broken. This used to be a like a water bowl basin, but it'll still work for plants, and I could coat the inside with some cement and fix it up. That's just a pot that needs to be moved out of there. And then I would put this centered in over there and get the orange tree moved away. But wouldn't that be pretty? Just a nice shallow bowl with those pretty glossy elephant ears in the middle and just lemon coral sedum all the way around it. Like just that, just green on green, very simple. I think that might look kind of cool, and it would be an easy project. So once I get my drip up and running, which will hopefully be soon for the sake of the people who are watering my plants and for my plants, that that, that will get done. Because I'd want to get it on drip. The colocages and alocages, you dig those up and transplant them. And they just throw a fit. Here are the ones that um, my helper dug up for me a couple weeks ago, and they wilted. And they're already coming up and looking good. I have a voodoo lily back here that didn't make it into the garden tour that is doing wonderfully without the magnolia tree above it putting all the shade down on it it has three leaves on it which is the most it's ever had and i've had this for like a good decade and it, it's the first time where it's like oh my gosh sunlight that magnolia tree just got so big but that's i mean that's what trees do i should have known better when i put it there it's actually very pleasantly surprised to even see that come up because last year i, I just thought it was dead because it didn't even come up last year so that's encouraging. This is, uh, I actually don't remember, but I'll dig in and next garden tour, I'll make sure to mention what variety of voodoo lily it is. I can't remember. I want to say it's one of the Sargantan. I'm not even going to try and remember. I've had it for such a long time. I'll, I'll figure it out, though. Oh, and the other things that didn't make it into the garden tour are the pineapple lilies, which are getting way too much shade because the elephant ears are growing up around them, but aren't they cute? I just wanted to make sure to get, like, some of them on camera, because by the time the next garden tour comes around, they're not going to look anywhere near this good, but they've been <laughs> kind of gotten eaten by the elephant ears that just keep traveling down and moving in that direction. Eventually, these will be, like, over here in this corner, which will look cool, but, um, that's not where I planted them. They're supposed to be down there. 
that's why I got some of them dug up and moved and so it's, it's fine. Again, that's the thing this year. Everything's fine. It's whatever. Like I said, I don't want to make any plans, but I'm thinking next week this area is going to go ahead and get tidied and filled with like mostly collocages and alocages. I'm going to have the trunked alocages in the back and then this middle area in here filled in with elephant ear bulbs. I have a ton of big elephant ear bulbs that need to go into the ground. This whole area needed to be dug up and re-leveled and re-sloped and I can't I'm not doing that because I can't use a shovel right now, and it's probably going to be at least, I'd say, four to six weeks till I could use a shovel to this capacity, and that's assuming everything goes well, which is what I'm hoping for. It's what we're all hoping for, right? This is that's trying to stay positive for good news, and that I'll be able to they'll be able to fill my hole back in and put my ass back together next week or not, and make the hole bigger, and at least I already know what to expect since they've already done it once, so that's good I guess um but that I think would be the easiest way to go ahead and just handle this area instead of taking on a big project like I had originally planned was just I'll just put all my elephant ears over here and just have like an elephant ear garden it'll be simple easy to maintain and it'll be pretty and I'm thinking with this palm tree trunk I was thinking I might screw a pot to the top of it and stick a majesty palm in it and just put some creeping jenny and let it run down the sides I know that sounds weird and tacky but like why not? I need a machine to get this thing out of the ground, and I'm not paying someone to bring a machine out here to pull that trunk out of the ground right now. You know, medical bills and things are rolling in. The trunk can stay for right now. Maybe if someone wants to carve it up, do something with it, I can plant a vine on it. I don't know. This year, it's not going anywhere. At least not if it's going to cost money to get rid of it. If it's going to, it's going to stay there if it's going to cost money. Eventually, going to need to get something planted around these mule palms, but, uh, I guess I should probably, that'll probably be a good weekend project. It's supposed to be nice and cool out. So we'll get some annuals tossed into those pots just to make them look a little bit nicer. But otherwise, everything's growing and doing okay. Nothing's major dying or anything like that. How you doing, Tobes? Yeah, you're such a good boy. This whole area is finally getting cleaned up down here. There was, I had like a storage area that was overflowing with all of my old fertilizers and like broken pottery that I was like I'm gonna fix it someday and I went through and I was like I don't I don't want to mess with that so I gutted the area out so now I have an area to put all of my new fertilizers and supple like soil amendment type things that are piled around this table so I can get those moved and so I can finally get all that stuff picked up because I'm not using like I don't need a potting area anymore with what's going on that's not a top priority of mine right it's just need to get that out of here and then I can do the things and get the tables cleaned up and yeah, it's not so bad. It's messy, but it's life. It's just the way things are right now. I mean, and have always been. Things have always been pretty chaotic out here. Ugh, and just like that, 15 minutes, and it's starting to get hot out, so I have to go inside. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for ya. Um, uh, like I said, thank you all for the well wishes. Still waiting on those results, so... Uh, I'm just trying to stay positive and, you know, a little bit more scatterbrained than the scatterbrained human that I always am. And that's okay. It's just normal with what's going on. But, I, I, like I said, I feel good. And, uh, like, I'm not, like, in pain or uncomfortable or anything. So, like, after the fifth day from surgery, I was like, hey, this isn't so bad. And you would think, if you saw, if you saw the, the hole in my shoulder, the crater, it looks like a pothole you would think like, oh my gosh, that has to be horrible. But it's, it's, it's not, I, I, you know, when I've seen it been like, you know, I would expect that to hurt a lot more than it does. I'm grateful to be able to stand and at least be mostly functional considering the size of the gigantic gaping hole in my body, the one in my shoulder to be specific. <laughs> yeah, like I said, hope everybody's having a great weekend. Great day, beautiful day, beautiful life and positivity, love, all those fun things. Everybody deserves it. It's a beautiful day. Things could always be worse, right? If I have any updates to give, I will give them. And um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go inside, hang out with my animals, and we'll edit this video. Yeah, I'll do that. That's probably important in order to be able to put the video out, duh. And still, lots of fun things to get planted over here. Like I mentioned before, we're supposed to have a couple days in the 80s here coming up, and I think that that will be the day when I try and get, well, not me, but I try and point and say put this here with a lot of these things and other people will get them planted for me which is exciting because there are a lot of things to be planted i don't know what i'm going to do with the knockoff
duck guards, the variegated camp wires. Home Depot, y'all lied to me and I don't appreciate it. Dang, this queen palm is flushing out. It is so happy over here. I said I was gonna go. Okay, time to go. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.